Hello everyone. Today we are going to analyze this beam using stiffness matrix method. Before analyzing, let us see the beam one time. In this beam, there are three spans span AB, span BC, and span CD. Also, there is a overhanging span DE. In the span AB, there is a point load 40 kN acting in the center. In the span BC, there is a concentrated moment 80 kN meter. It is acting in the clockwise direction. In the span CD, there is uniformly distributed load 48 kN per meter acting for the full span. In the overhanging span DE, there is a point load 40 kN acting in the point E. The moment of inertia for the span AB is 3I. The moment of inertia for the span BC is 2I. For the span CD, it is 2I. And for the overhanging part, it is I. AB and BC are 4 meter long. CD is 5 meter long. The overhanging part is 3 meter long. In this beam, there are 7 movements we have to find. In the point A, there is a fixed support. In the fixed support, there will be a movement. Here, the movement is MAB. In the joints, there will be two movements. In the joint B, there are two movements, MBA and MBC. In the joint C, there are two movements, MCB and MCD. And in the joint D also, there are two movements, MTC and MDE. So, totally we have to find seven movements. Also, we have to find four vertical reactions, RA, RB, RC and RD. In the joint D, we can easily find the final movements. Because on the right of D, there is overhanging. To calculate MDE, we have to multiply the point load 40 kN with the overhanging distance 3. When we do that, we are getting 120. MDE is acting in the anticlockwise direction. So, it should be negative. In this case, we have to apply a negative sign with the load so that we will get a negative moment. The values of MDC and MDE will be same, but they will have the different signs. MDE is acting in the anticlockwise direction. It should be negative. MDC is acting in the clockwise direction, so it should be positive. But both of them will be having the same value. In this concept, we can calculate MDC very easily. For that, we have to just change the sign of MDE. When we do that, we are getting positive 120. Now, let us calculate the fixed end moments. First, let us find them in the span AB. In the span AB, there is a point load 40 kN acting in the center. The formulas for the fixed end moments are minus WL upon 8 and positive WL upon 8. Using the formulas, we are getting M of AB and M of BA. Now, let us take the span BC and find out the fixed end moments. In the span BC, there is a concentrated moment, 80 kN meter, acting in the clockwise direction. This moment is acting in the center. The formulas for the fixed end moments are positive m upon 4 and positive m upon 4. Using the formulas, we are getting m of bc and m of cb. 
Now let us make the fixed end moments in the span CD. In the span CD, there is UDL 48 kN per meter and it is acting for the full span. The formulas for the fixed end moments are minus WL square upon 12 and positive WL square upon 12. Using the formulas, we are getting M of CD and M of DC. We have calculated the fixed end moments in the spans AB, BC and CD. No need to make the fixed end moments in the overhanging span. In the stiffness matrix method, we have to check the number of supports in which slope can occur. Let us see the conditions. In the fixed support, there will be no slope. In the hinged support, there will be slope. In the roller support also, there will be slope. In this beam, in the points B, C and D, there are hinged supports. So, the number of supports where slope occurs is 3. In the point B, there is theta B. In the point C, there is theta C. And in the point D, there is theta D. So, in this analysis, there are 3 unknowns. If we calculate these 3 unknowns, we can easily find out the final moments. Now, let us make the fully restrained structure. In the fully restrained structure, there will be no displacement. We know that only in the fixed support, there will be no slope. Let us remove the hinged supports from the points B, C and D and replace them with the fixed supports. This structure is called the fully restrained structure. In the fully restrained structure, no need to consider the overhanging. We have made the fully restrained structure. Now let us make the coordinates diagram. In this analysis, there are three coordinates. The coordinates are in the points B, C and D because in these points only we have the unknown displacement that is the slope. The coordinates should be made in the clockwise direction. You can see that all of the coordinates are in the clockwise direction. We know the formula to find out the slope values. Delta matrix is equal to K matrix inverse into P matrix minus PL matrix. Inside the delta matrix, P matrix and PL matrix, we will have three values. Because in this analysis, there are three coordinates. In this formula, first let us find the PL matrix. We know that the PL matrix is the moments developed in the coordinates due to the given load. In this analysis, there are three coordinates. In the points B, C and D, there are coordinates. The PL matrix should be made in the order first from the first coordinate, then from the second coordinate, then from the third coordinate. In the point B, we have calculated two fixed end moments, M of BA and M of BC. We have to add both of them. After adding, we are getting 40. In the point C, we have calculated two fixed end moments, M of CB and M of CD. We have to add them. After adding, we are getting minus 80. In the point D, we have calculated one fixed end moment, M of DC. Let us apply that. In this formula, we have made the PL matrix. Now, let us make the P matrix. We know that P matrix is the final forces or movements. 
acting in the coordinate direction on the right of D there is overhanging due to the overhanging we have calculated two final moments MDE and MDC here we have to be very careful the P matrix should be calculated in the order first from the first coordinate then from the second coordinate and finally from the third coordinate now let us take the first coordinate in the point B there is no movement developed due to the overhanging so for the first coordinate we have to apply 0 now let us see the second coordinate in the point C there is no movement developed due to the overhanging so for the second coordinate also we have to apply 0 now let us take the third coordinate in the point D we have found two movements MDE and MDC here we may have some doubts which movement we have to apply in the matrix MDE is acting in the overhanging span so we should not take it MDC is acting in the span DC so we have to consider MDC MDC is 120 let us apply that in this formula we have found PL matrix and the P matrix now we are going to make the stiffness matrix now let us see how to calculate the stiffness elements inside the stiffness matrix for that we have to apply unit displacement in every coordinate in this analysis there are three coordinates in the points B, C and D we are having the coordinates so we have to apply the unit displacement in these coordinates then we have to use the formulas if the fair end is fixed the formula is 4 EA upon L if the fair end is hinged the formula is 2 EA upon L we have to be very careful we have to apply the unit displacement in the fully restrained structure and not in the given beam now let us see the size of the stiffness matrix for three coordinates it will be 3 cross 3 for two coordinates it will be 2 cross 2 for one coordinate it will be 1 cross 1 in this analysis we have three coordinates so the size of the matrix will be 3 cross 3 in the stiffness matrix now let us make the first row for that we have to apply unit displacement in the first coordinate in the point B there is a fixed support but when we apply the unit displacement in the point B it is no longer a fixed support it becomes a hinged support now let us see how to draw this curve we are applying unit displacement in the point B the point B is a joint it is connecting the spans BA and BC so we have to make two clockwise curves one curve towards the point A and one curve towards the point C both of the curves should be in the clockwise direction then we have to see the direction of the arrows this arrow indicates upwards so the curve comes above the span this arrow indicates downwards so the curve comes below the span we have to give some gap between the fixed supports and the curves because in the fixed supports there will be no slope you can see that I have given some gap between the fixed supports and the curves that is why the curve ends before the point C and it cannot continue after the point C 
same like in the coordinates diagram the coordinates should be made in the clockwise direction now we are going to find out the stiffness matrix elements k11 should be calculated from the first coordinate k12 should be calculated from the second coordinate k13 should be calculated from the third coordinate now let us find k11 for that from the point b we have to look on both the sides on the left side there is a fixed support if the fair end is fixed the formula for the stiffness is 4 ei upon l the moment of inertia for a b is 3 i so instead of i we have to apply 3 i length of a b is 4 let us apply that now let us look on the right of b on the right side also there is a fixed support so we have to apply the same formula 4 ei upon l the moment of inertia for bc is 2i so instead of i we have to apply 2i length of bc is 4 meter let us apply that for k11 there are two values we have to add both of them after adding we are getting 5 ei now let us calculate k12 for that from the point c we have to look on both of the sides on the right side there is no slope curve if there is no curve there will be no stiffness on the left side there is a hinged support if the fair end is hinged the formula for the stiffness is 2 ei upon l the moment of inertia for cb is 2i so instead of i we have to apply 2i length of cb is 4 let us apply that finally for k12 we are getting ei now let us calculate k13 for that from the point d we have to look on both of the sides on the right side there is nothing on the left side there is no curve in this case there will be no stiffness value so k13 is 0 in the stiffness matrix now let us make the second row for that we have to apply unit displacement in the second coordinate in the point c there is a fixed support but when we apply the unit displacement it is no longer a fixed support it becomes a hinged support now let us see how to draw this curve we are applying unit displacement in the point c the point c is the joint it is connecting the spans cb and cd so we have to make two clockwise curves one curve towards the point b and one curve towards the point d then using the direction of the arrows we can draw this curve we have to give some gap between the fixed support and the curves now let us find the stiffness matrix elements first let us find k21 for that from the point b we have to look on both of the sides on the left side there is no slope curve so there will be no stiffness value on the right side there is a hinged support if the fair end is hinged the formula for the stiffness is 2 ei upon l the moment of inertia for bc is 2i so instead of i we have to apply 2i length of bc is 4 let us apply that finally for k21 we are getting ei now let us calculate k22 for that from the point c we have to look on both of the sides on the left side there is a fixed support if the fair end is fixed the formula for the stiffness is 4 ei upon l the moment of inertia for cb is 2i so instead of i we have to apply 2i length of cb is 4 
let us apply that now let us look on the right side on the right side also there is a fixed support so we have to apply the same formula 4 ei upon l moment of inertia for cd is 2i so instead of i we have to apply 2i length of cd is 5 let us apply that for k22 there are two values we have to add both of them after adding we are getting 3.6 ei now let us calculate k23 for that from the point d we have to look on both of the sides on the right side there is nothing on the left side there is a hinged support if the fair end is hinged the formula for the stiffness is 2 ei upon l the moment of inertia for dc is 2i so instead of i we have to apply 2i length of dc is 5 let us apply that finally for k23 we are getting 0.8 ei now let us make the third row in the stiffness matrix for that we have to apply unit displacement in the third coordinate in the point d there is a fixed support but when we apply the unit displacement it becomes a hinged support now let us see how to draw this curve we are applying unit displacement in the point d so from the point d we have to make a clockwise curve towards the point c then using the direction of the arrow we have to draw this curve we know that we must give some gap between the fixed support and the curve now let us calculate the stiffness matrix elements first let us find k31 for that from the point b we have to look on both of the sides on the left side there is no slope curve on the right side also there is no slope curve in this case there will be no stiffness so k31 will be zero now let us calculate k32 for that from the point c we have to look on both of the sides on the left side there is no slope curve so there will be no stiffness on the right side there is a hinged support if the fair end is hinged the formula for stiffness is 2 ei upon l moment of inertia for cd is 2i so instead of i we have to apply 2i length of cd is 5 let us apply that finally for k32 we are getting 0.8 EI. Now let us calculate K33. For that, from the point D, we have to look on both of the sides. On the right side, there is nothing. On the left side, there is a fixed support. If the fair end is fixed, the formula for stiffness is 4 EI upon L. The moment of inertia for DC is 2I. And length is 5. Let us apply them. Finally, for K33, we are getting 1.6 EI. In the stiffness matrix, we have calculated all of the rows. Let us apply the values. EI is constant. Let us keep it outside. In this formula, we have found everything. Let us apply them. EI inverse is 1 upon EI. For this matrix, we have to find the inverse. We can apply all of the values in the calculator and find the inverse. If you do not know how to find inverse in the calculator, see the description below. There is a link. You can click the link and watch the video. I have used the calculator and got the inverse. Then we have to add these two matrices. After adding, we are getting this. Then we have to multiply these two matrices. You can see the multiplication. After multiplying, we are getting the final answers. The final answers will be according to the coordinates. 
the first coordinate is in the point B. So first we will get theta B. The second coordinate is in the point C. So here we get theta C. The final coordinate is in the point D. So here we will get theta D. In this analysis we have found all of the unknowns. Now we can make slope deflection equations and find out the final moments. Let us make the slope deflection equations in the span AB. In the equations, let us apply the fixed end moments. The moment of inertia for AB is 3i. So instead of i, we have to apply 3i. Length of AB is 4 meter. Let us apply in both of the equations. In the point A, there is a fixed support. In the fixed support, there will be no slope. So, theta A will be 0. After applying the value of theta B in both of the equations, we are getting MAB and MBA. Now, let us make the slope deflection equations in the span BC. In the equations, let us apply the fixed end moments. The moment of inertia for BC is 2i. So instead of i, we have to apply 2i. Length of BC is 4 meter. Let us apply that. After applying the values of theta B and theta C in both of the equations, we are getting MBC and MCB. Now let us make the slope deflection equation in the span CD. We have to make the equation only for MCD because we have already calculated MDC. So don't waste the time. Only make the equation for MCD. In the equation, let us apply the fixed end moment. The moment of inertia for CD is 2i. So instead of i, we have to apply 2i. Length of CD is 5 meter. Let us apply that. After applying the values of theta c and theta d, we are getting MCD. In this analysis, we have calculated all of the moments. In this analysis, we have calculated all of the moments. For MAB, we got a negative value. That means it is acting in the anticlockwise direction. For MBA, we got a negative value. So it is also acting in the anticlockwise direction. For MBC, we got a positive value. That means it is acting in the clockwise direction. Previously, we assumed that MBA would be acting in the clockwise direction and MBC would be acting in the anticlockwise direction. But our assumptions are wrong. For MCB, we got a positive value. That means it is acting in the clockwise direction. For MCD, we got a negative value. That means it is acting in the anticlockwise direction. Now let us find the vertical reactions. First, let us take the span AB and calculate the vertical reactions. In the span AB, there are two moments. MAB, which is acting in the anticlockwise direction, and MBA, which is also acting in the anticlockwise direction. First, I am going to find out RA. For that, I am going to take moment about B. In this case, I am moving towards right hand side. Clockwise will be positive and anticlockwise will be negative. RA is acting towards the point B in the clockwise direction. So it will be positive and the distance is 4 meter. So for RA, the point load 40 kN is acting towards the point B in the anticlockwise direction. So it will be negative and the distance is 2 meter. Then we have two moments. 
both of them are acting in the anticlockwise direction so both of them will be negative finally we are getting rea by applying the rule sigma v is equal to 0 we can find out rb1 now let us take the span bc and find out the vertical reactions in the span bc there are two movements mbc which is acting in the clockwise direction and mcb which is also acting in the clockwise direction in this span first i am going to find out rv2 for that i am going to take movement about c rb2 is acting towards the point c in the clockwise direction so it will be positive and the distance is 4 meter so for rb2 the concentrated movement is acting in the clockwise direction so it will be positive then we have two end movements 19.6 and 58.8 both of them are acting in the clockwise direction. So both of them are positive. Finally, we are getting RB2. For RB2, we will get a negative value. That means our assumption is wrong. We assumed that RB2 is acting upwards, but actually it is acting downwards. Now let us apply the rule sigma v is equal to 0 and find out RC1. Here we have to be very careful. When we apply the value of RB2, we must apply as negative value because it is acting downwards. Finally, we are getting RC1 which is equal to 39.6 kN. Now let us take the spans CD and the overhanging span DE together and find out the vertical reactions. When we take these spans together, no need to consider MDC and MDE because they will get eliminated. Only we have to consider MCD which is acting in the anticlockwise direction. When we take movement about D, we can find out RC2. Then we can apply the rule sigma v is equal to 0 and find out rd. Now let us add rb1 and rb2 so that we will get rb. For rb we will get a negative value that means rb is acting downwards. Then let us add rc1 and rc2. After adding we are getting rc. Now we are going to draw the shear force diagram. I am going to calculate the shear force values from the point A. In this case I am moving towards right hand direction. Upwards will be positive and downwards will be negative. You can see the shear force values. Using the values we can draw the shear force diagram. Now let us draw the free movement diagram. For drawing the free movement diagram, we have to consider every span as a separate simply supported beam and calculate the bending moments. First, let us take the span AB. In the span AB, there is a point load acting in the center. If in the simply supported beam, point load is acting on the center, the formula for calculating the maximum bending moment is WL upon 4. Using the formula, we are getting 40. In the span BC, there is a concentrated moment. The concentrated moment is acting in the center and it is acting in the clockwise direction. The formulas to find out the maximum bending moments are M upon 2 and m upon 2. Here the movement is 80. So 80 by 2 we will get 40. On the right of the movement it will be positive 
and on the left side it will be negative. Now let us take the span CD. In the span CD there is UDL 48 kN per meter acting for the full span. The formula to find out the maximum bending moment is W L square upon 8. After applying the values inside the formula, we are getting 150. For the point load and for the point movement, the free movement diagram will be in the shape of triangles. For the UDL, the free movement diagram will be in the shape of parabola. Now let us make the end movement diagram. In the direction of the movements, we have to make the diagram. If the end movement diagram comes above this line, that will be negative. If it goes below the line, that will be positive. So here and here it is negative and here it is positive. Now we can combine the free movement diagram and end movement diagram so that we will get the bending movement diagram. Now we are going to end this session. Thank you for watching this video.